Hey crew, happy Halloween. Um, I do not have my costume on right now. I was Elliot from ET, and I have an ET on my bike. Wait, I'll show you, I gotta show you. But I need to show you anyways. Hang on. <laughs> anyways, all right, back to our regular scheduled printer happy hour. So, um, I've had a lot of questions lately, so thank you all for leaving your questions for her in her happy hour. It always makes me happy to answer questions that are actually helpful for you guys. So today I have one from Matt, um, who is asking about how to protect his, his voice. And it hurts his voice because he's always talking in school and in classes, so then to go and teach, it's, it's tough. Totally get it. This is a very common problem. Hey, Camille. Um, so the problem, there's a couple things here I wanna talk about. First of all, and this one is, is pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do it. So as instructors, we should always be staying hydrated, right, throughout the day, before and after classes, on days you're not teaching, hydration is key in general, whether you teach or not. Um, super important to protect your vo voice. So just make sure that you're getting enough water. Now, this is probably TMI, but the way that you check if you're hydrated is just by looking at your pee. If it's too yellow, if it's like a, dark yellow, you need to drink more water. If it's like closer to a clear color, you're good to go. So simple as that. It doesn't have to be a certain amount of ounces. It doesn't have to be any of that crap. Just making sure that you check your pee. Simple as that. Um, a mic and water is imperative. Yes, Diana, definitely. So water while you're teaching, but I'm talking about like throughout the day, staying hydrated before you go to teach, after you teach, just in general, taking care of your body, right? Um, another thing is, and this is a very common issue. When you're wearing your mic, and that's, I guess, step one, make sure you have a mic, right? If you're yelling to a class of more than this, um, so make sure that you have a mic and a good mic, a mic that works, but also, key here, do not yell into your mic. So I have been to so many classes where the instructor yells to the class and teaches to the class through the mic as if they would if they weren't wearing one, which first of all, it's painful on your riders because it's way too loud. You don't need to yell at them. But also the whole point of the mic is that you don't have to yell. So you can growl at them, you can, you can encourage them, you can get you know excited, but you don't need to scream at them. So just make sure when you're wearing your mic, maybe practice in an empty room, walk around, talk, make sure you can hear it from the back of the room, but notice that you can probably hear yourself even just talking, so you don't need to be yelling. So again, that will, if you're yelling for 45 minutes to an hour straight, of course you're gonna lose your voice. That's just how it will work. So make sure that you're saving your voice when you need to and protecting it by using that mic to help you so you don't need to yell. Key. Um, another thing that's really good, and let me just stop here. There are a lot of you know voice exercises you can do to protect your vocal cords. I'm not privy on, on that stuff. I'm not like a master on vocal cords. I'm sure that you can find a lot of that stuff on the internet. I'm giving you the things that I do personally that work great for me. Knock on wood, I've been in class and not being able to talk ever in my life and I teach a lot of classes. So um, hydration, using your mic to help you without yelling into it, sleep and rest. So if you ever notice when you're low on sleep and you're exhausted, your voice gets a little raspy, it's, it goes hand in hand. So you have to rest your voice, you have to rest your body. In general, guys, these are all things that we do anyways to take care of ourselves, right? So it's really, it all just goes in hand in hand. If you think about when people get laryngitis or when they lose their voice, it's usually because they're super run down, they're tired, they're maybe getting sick on top of the fact that they're also teaching. It's not just that they're teaching their lifestyle. So keep that in mind as well. Um, what else did I have in here? Oh, something that helps me a lot, and I don't know what your studios are like, I'm not gonna begin to guess, but um, it does get very humid in our studio if we don't have our dehumidifier on. So make sure that your studio air quality is good, maybe um, suggest to your manager, if possible, if it gets really humid in your room or dry one way or the other, you wanna protect that quality, that air quality, not just for you, but for your riders, right? So I've been in a lot of studios that get very, very dry because they crank the AC and that can definitely hurt your voice. Um, obviously breathing in dry be hard. So check in on that, like go into the room, just see what it feels like when, not, when you're not focused on teaching and maybe you can adjust something with your manager there. Um, on top of that, think about the air quality in your homes. 
or wherever you spend most of your day. Um, if you're, you might not be able to change this, if you work, maybe you're a teacher, you can't really change your classroom, but so at home at my condo, I have a dehumidifier and an air filter when I sleep. And I find that that has helped me immensely in protecting my voice and in general, just keeping me from getting sick because air quality is huge and I live in the city. So it's even more important for me. So just make sure a lot of this stuff when it comes to your voice, but also your general health as an instructor, 90% of it is where you spend the rest of your day, not where you spend your teaching time, because that's such a small part of your day. So keeping your body healthy, getting quality air, rest, hydration, all of these things will help you protect your voice and your body in general. Um, let me see if I had anything else. Oh, the other thing that you can do, and I've, I think I've done a couple of Herner Happy Hours on this, when you are teaching, if you do find, Matt, especially if you find you're losing your voice and you know you have to go teach that day, one, practice the mic thing, right? Practice speaking at a normal volume, not yelling. Hey, Tara. Using your nonverbal cues, which again, I've talked about this in past per Herner Happy Hours, but use your hands to talk to them, right? You don't always have to yell at them. Use your hands, use your body language. They will get it if you cue them the right way they will start to understand your different cues. If you're always just talking to them, it can get a little tricky to get them used to that, but very often I use my hands or I count them down with my fingers or they know exactly what to do and they do it perfectly and I don't even need to say anything sometimes. So you're always gonna need to talk a little bit, but you can help yourself by using those nonverbal cues and maybe limiting a little bit of your coaching. That gave you some ideas. I know that was a lot. Um, I definitely have a whole lot of thoughts when it comes to this subject, as you can see. If you have any questions, Matt, you especially, because you asked this question or anyone else, or if other people have suggestions for protecting your voice, if people know some of those voice exercises that I was talking about. Um, like I said, there's a million and one on the internet, so if nobody has any, you can find them there. But Please leave them in the comments. Um, Diana said, had to use hand cues at one of my gyms when suddenly the mic died. Annoying without a mic, but totally doable. 100%, that's awesome. And a great way to improv as an instructor. I'm impressed by that, Diana, way to go. Um, but it's very doable. Um, I've been to classes where an instructor literally had no voice and she could barely talk the whole time. And the class was still great because of the nonverbal cues and obviously other things that she showed us on the bike. But it can be do it is very doable so just keep that in mind um that's all i got guys uh i hope everyone has a wonderful halloween let me know by the way if you have cool costumes please post pictures in the group i always want to see that and um stay safe stay dry eat some candy enjoy yourself and i'll see you guys next week have a great day